Hey, it's Sam. And John. And you can watch new episodes of our latest podcast, OKOP, where we tell the funniest freaking stories on the internet. Like someone making billions off a of plane RuneScape? Oh, who make those Bitcoin billies. Or the doctor accidentally putting the mistress as the emergency contact instead of the wife. Hey, yo, that sounds like a family feud. Do not tell Steve Harvey. But the point is, we got some bangers. Yes, so if you want to laugh and occasionally cringe, listen now for free wherever you get your podcasts. Fibber McGee and Molly. The first evaporated milk, Pet Milk, presents Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick LeGrand, Cliff Arquette, Tyler McVeigh, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie and directed by Max Hutto with music by the King's Band and Billy Mills Orchestra. There are very few foods that cost so little, yet mean so much to so many people, as pet evaporated milk. Pet milk helps babies to grow strong and sturdy with straight limbs and sound teeth. Pet milk helps toddlers to grow and develop into vigorous, happy boys and girls. Pet milk helps wives and mothers to fix more delicious, more nourishing family meals at lower cost. And thus helps young and old to keep feeling their best. Of all the protective foods, none is more important than good whole milk. And pet milk is good whole milk that is double rich, concentrated to double richness by evaporation. Let pet milk help you have better meals at lower cost. Let pet milk help you keep your family well and happy. Your grocer has pet milk. Take home several cans tomorrow. Mr. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista is going to a convention in Peoria. (laughs) But the news for the people of Peoria isn't all bad. Mrs. McGee is going with him this time to keep him out of trouble. Dr. Gamble is helping them pack as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. We got everything I need packed now, Molly, before I close the suitcase? Yes, dearie, everything you need is in the bag and half the things you don't need. You got all my convention equipment in there? I hate to forget my convention equipment. Come on, Marblehead, shut up. Huh? The suitcase, your cab will be here and you oh, won't be right. Oh, Doc. Did you pack my electric cane, Molly? My carnation that squirts? Yes, yes, How about my straw hat with the neon band? And my necktie that lights up and says, Look jumpy. Look jumpy? Why would a necktie say, Look jumpy? <laughs> don't be ridiculous, fatso. My tie lights up and says, which way is the men's room? (laughs) It's a very handy device. Oh, stop it, stop it, flap trap. Hmm? You've got that suitcase packed eight feet deep now. Let's see if we can close it. If you put one more handkerchief in that unhappy Gladstone, it'll throw a hinge. Yes, it will, McGee. My own suitcase is so full, I had to take two jokers out of the canasta deck to get the lid closed. (laughs) I've already called the taxi now, so you Okay, better... okay. Set on the suitcase, Ducky. All right. There. Now, you lock it while I... No, no, no. Not that way, large bucket. <laughs> Set on the edge of it. How can I lock the suitcase when I can't even see it? <laughs> oh, for... There. Is that better? Yeah, now hold it while I... Oh, hey, I just thought of something, Molly. You think I ought to take a few paper bags full of water to drop out of windows? <laughs> Nothing helps a convention like that. No, few... McGee, absolutely not. Yeah, I guess you're right. Too hard to pack. <laughs> I can get water in Peoria anyway. <laughs> if I try hard enough. Now, that's got a dot. Thanks. Yeah. It's a pleasure, my boy. Anything that'll get you out of town for a couple of days is sheer delight. Thanks, pal. What's the name of this thing you're going to again? The annual convention of the what? The Song and Dance Performers Organization of Peoria. Yeah. The sad poops. <laughs> McGee hopes to be elected president of it this year. That would explain the name, all right. Yep, and I've been cheated out of it every year up to now, Doc, one way or another. But this time, I got my campaign all planned. I can hardly wait not to hear about it. Yep. <laughs> if I can get on the vote counting committee and get Fred Nittany, the guy that I and he had a vaudeville act from Star Rock, Illinois, together, 
that we would have been charter members of the sad poops, only some other guy started the outfit first and we joined it later to help me, I'm in. <laughs> you see why I get so confused with politics, Doctor? You see, Doc, what I... Hold it, hold it. Here comes the cab pulling up out front. Oh, good. Grab the bags, Molly. I'll check the lights and see... Everything is turned off, dearie, and locked up. Now, come on. I'll take your bag, Molly. Grab your coat. Hey, here's my bag, too, Doc. I'll open the door for you so you won't get... Somebody call a cab on the... Oh, hi, daughter. Hi, Doc. Oh. Hi, John. Well, hello, Mr. Oldtimer. My gosh, Oldtimer, I didn't know you drove a cab. Is this a regular job? You just... Nope, I'm what they call a relief driver, Johnny. Yeah? Everybody that gets out of my cab gives a big sign and says, Whew, what a relief. <laughs> what cab company is this, anyhow? You an independent cab driver? Independent as a hog on ice, Doc. <laughs> Don't care whether you ride with me or not. Where you going, kid? Someplace? <laughs> We're going to the Union Station, Mr. Oldtimer. We're going to a convention in Peoria. I'll ride as far as the hospital with you, if you don't mind. You go past the hospital on your way to the station, old-timer? A good cab driver, doctor, can go past any place on his way to any place. <laughs> just as long as the meter is clicking. <laughs> and it is. I hope you know how to drive that cab, because we're in kind of a hurry to get... Don't worry, Johnny, I'll get you there pronto. Yeah. May have to drive a little slower than usual, though. Been having a little trouble with my new glasses. Wait a minute now. You're having trouble with your glasses and you're driving a cab? You betcha, daughter. I'm no quitter. I'm no sissy. For a while there, it was pretty bad, though. Yeah? Couldn't tell whether them traffic lights was gray for go or blue for stop. <laughs> gray for go? Uh-oh. It's better now, though. Them traffic lights look all the same. Purple. <laughs> Yeah. Well, look, maybe we better walk to the station. I've well, think... got no time to fool around now, Johnny. If you want to make that train, you kids hop in the cab there and... Hey, where's my cab? My taxi cab, I'll let you right here. Oh, here it is. <laughs> climb in. <laughs> yeah, you kids climb in. I'll walk to the hospital. <laughs> I'll try it under the steering wheel, Johnny, and start her up. You kids hop in the back and... Uh, hey. Hey, who took my steering wheel? <laughs> Johnny, if you stole my steering wheel... Oh, I'll... get out of there. You're in the back seat. <laughs> my gosh, how can you drive a cab? To... <laughs> uh, don't worry about a thing, Johnny. Union Station, here we come. Hold tight, kids. Oh, yeah. Mr. Oldtimer, wait. We don't... Don't worry, daughter. You kids relax. Hold your hands over your eyes. I'll get you there. Here, please, now. Stop the cab. Uh, Nervous, daughter? No. Lonesome. Could we please go back and get my husband? Oh! Billy Mills, the orchestra, and get out those old records.
seems rather crowded. Now, come on, Molly. Gate 5 is over this way. Oh, McGee, I'm so excited. Yeah? I can't wait to get on that train. I love to ride trains. Well, not me, kiddo. I hate it. You do? You betcha. I've stuck my leg into the right arm of my overcoat in the upper berth at 5 a.m. too often. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this trip ought to be fun. I'm anxious Your to... Your get... attention, please. Will passengers for train number seven, the bone shaker, leaving at 4.22 and a half for Poison Wells, Christmas Crossing... Mutton Point, Left Me Flat, and Naked Joe, Missouri. Please not be so stupid. This is the Union Station, and that train leaves from Grand Central. Thank you. Grand Central? Hey, what's that guy talking about? You can't get the Fury on the Grand Central. Oh, oh, hi, Oli. Uh, hey, Molly, here's Oli. Oli from the Elk Club. Oh, hello there, Oli. Well, hello, Mrs. Nice to see you. Well, hello, McGee. Hi. You coming back from someplace, I'm afraid, or going away, everybody hopes. We're going to Peoria, Oli, for a convention. Oh, for goodness sake, a convention. Yeah. You know I went to one of those things once. Yeah. Uh, sons and daughters of Sweden at Ross in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Huh? <laughs> I played a bass drum in the parade, you know, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Some fun, eh? No, it was very miserable, McGee. Yeah? It starts to rain, and I don't see where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And my drum makes so much noise, I don't hear a reader's whistle. Mm -hmm. So I walk, and I walk, and I walk. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Till I suddenly see I'm marching all alone. Heavenly days, what you do, Ollie? Well, I ask somebody, where am I? And he says, this is St. Paul. So... <laughs> I'm very glad to meet you. Can I trade you a drum for a horse? <laughs> well, this is a convention of the S-A-D-P-O-O-P, Zoli. The Sad Poops. <laughs> Song and Dance Performers Organization of Peoria. I'll maybe get to be president of it this year. Probably by a unanimous vote, like maybe 68 to 23. <laughs> It ought to be a very amusing convention, Ollie. You know how old vaudevillians are. No, Mrs. I don't. You know, vaudeville never get very familiar with me. How are they? <laughs> oh, we just sat around and lied to each other about how often we played the palace. And <laughs> yeah. How Ziegfeld tried to send for us, but the telegram got mislaid. <laughs> what we did to him in Kankakee. <laughs> then we all have a good cry for poor old Mill Feather and Crump. Jugglers extraordinary that brained each other simultaneously with Indian clubs at the Ramona Theater in Grand Rapids in 1913. Well, I, I don't know much about show business, McGee, except for my wife's cousin, Thor. He was a hoofer. Oh, oh wonderful. Tap or soft shoe, Oli. Uh, what kind of dancing did he do? Oh, Thor, he, he don't dance. He, that's a very clumsy fella. Well, you said he was a hooker. Sure, the Clink's mule. Oh. <laughs> After every show, he looks after the hoofs. You know, I remember one time. Your attention, please. Train number 94, the cinder bucket, now leading on track five for Grand Rapids, Bryn, Paul Crawford, and Bad Lockdown. All the time, Prince of Soul, Rick, Herc, and Deoria. Well, we better get going. Goodbye, Ollie. Yeah, so long, Ollie. So long, both you fellas. <laughs> You don't mind riding backwards, McGee? I'll be glad to change places with no, you. No, I don't, I don't mind riding backwards. Matter of fact, being the kind of a guy I am, I'd rather not see what's ahead of me anyway. <laughs> Passengers on the center bucket, we're passing through a very interesting part of the country. As you face forward, the high seat to the left is Mount Shag, which is composed almost entirely of prosmotite. What's prosmotite? Prosmotite is a rare mineral. <laughs> Which, combined with other minerals, becomes frizzletide, the priceless ingredient which...
bristlesite was the priceless ingredient of? I don't know, but I think it's the stuff they soak shoelaces in so they can only bust while they're running for a streetcar. <laughs> Well, maybe it's the stuff they put... Candy bars, peanuts, magazines, pet milk. The long trip, folks, the dining car is a good skip. So get your candy bars, your peanuts, your pet milk. Hey, yeah. hey, Junior. Mr. Wilcox. Well, for the... Hello, Molly. Hello, pal. Hello, Hilo. Heavenly days. No matter where we go, we always seem to run into Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> the way you turn up is positively uncanny. Please, Molly, never use that word to me. <laughs> I am never uncanny. I've got dozens of them. Cans and cans and cans of pet evaporated milk. Junior, I've been riding these rattlers since the Union Pacific was a cow trail, and you're the first candy butcher I ever seen selling pet milk on a train. Well, naturally, it's my own idea, pal. Oh? You see, lots of families with children ride this train. Yeah. They need a good milk for coffee. Mm -hmm. They need yeah. the best milk for the children and for the baby's formula. So what's the answer? Pet milk. Yes, but how do you... Attention, please. Passengers out the center bucket. We are approaching the historic Silla Creek Tunnel. While digging this tunnel, workmen were astounded to find a huge... himself confused with Benny Goodman. Yeah. What'd they find huge in the tunnel, Junior? Oh, who cares, pal? Yeah, me too. The thing is that aside from the people who want pet milk on the train for their coffee and to mix the baby's formula... With a 22-foot tail. Wow. A lot of them buy it because they know they'll need pet milk when they get home or wherever they're going. If it had a tail 22 feet long, McGee, it must have been you see, one of those... people who travel get a good idea of value, and they know that pet milk is the all-family milk, especially for babies and growing children because Pets is sterilized in its own sealed can. If see. I'm elected president of the Sad Poops, I'm going to investigate And besides that, that besides that, you see, pet milk contains the milk minerals mm -hmm. so necessary to good, healthy growth and sound bones and teeth. 22 feet long. Wow. <laughs> so, for parents who want to give their youngsters every possible chance to grow up sturdy and strong, pet milk is practically a must. Hey. Oh. My gosh. What's that? Emergency? No, no, no. That's just a signal for me. Huh? Six short ones. It means take pet milk to baggage car, brakeman making coffee. <laughs> See you later, folks. Well, I'm just loving this series, but I Attention, am getting... Please. Passengers on the cinder bucket. We are now passing over the crushed mush viaduct. This famous landmark is the very site. <laughs> and ran back down the hill, complete renewed. <laughs> <laughs> Will you listen to the next interesting announcement? Is there any way we can shut that dad ratted thing off? Oh, don't shut it off. I'd still like to hear one complete announcement. Yeah, but my gosh, I don't Good see... Good day, what... folks. May I have your tickets, please? Oh, certainly, conductor. We gave the ticket. Yeah. Oh, hi, bud. I, I, don't go away. I, I, I got them here someplace. Now, let me see. I think I had them in my... No. Uh, well... Won't you sit down, conductor, uh, while my husband looks for a ticket? Well, no, thank you, madam. It is not permitted. Oh. It is a policy of the company to keep the personnel on their feet. Oh, yeah. Seems that the president of the railroad also owns a large firm which sells arch support. <laughs> He's no fool. <laughs> mm. Uh, find your tickets, sir? No, but I got them here someplace. Just be patient. I'm looking. Oh, it's nice to know you, Mr. Looking. Hmm? And this, I presume, is Mrs. Looking? No. No, I'm Mrs. McGee. I'm... Well, it's nice to see that you found a congenial traveling companion, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> May I have your tickets while Mr. Looking is hunting his? I got her tickets, Buster. Oh, you have? Yes, I have. Look, baby, never trust your railroad tickets to men you meet casually on trains. With a puss like this, he... How about those tickets, Mr. Looking? I'm not looking, doggone. You better get started. That's all I can say. Get started what? Looking. I am looking. Hide down a minute, will you? Don't take that tone of voice to me, mister. I can have you put off this train, you know. 
Oh, now, don't get so fresh. We've got tickets. What are you trying to do, roust us? Roust us? The lady am talking to you. That rat at my name ain't Rouses. I'm McGee. I thought you were looking. He can quit. Here's the tickets. I have them. I'm Thank sorry. you. Thank you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, madam. Now what? This is the right train, so don't give me oh, that Oh, but the wrong car, sir. What? This is car number two. Your car is toward the rear of the train. Well, that's all right. We'll go back there. Which is our car, sir? Number 418, madam. <laughs> this is a long train. What? Uh, for the... If I were a bell. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding. Ask me how do I feel? Ask me now that we're cozy and clinging. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bell, I'd be ringing. From the moment we kiss tonight, that's the way that I've got to behave. Boy, if I were a lamp, I'd like. Or if I were a banner, I'd wear. How do I feel, little me, with my quiet upbringing? Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a gate, I'd be swinging. And if I were a watch, I'd start popping my string, boy. For if I were a bell, I'd ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding. How do I feel from this chemistry lesson I'm learning? Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bridge, I'd be burning. Yes, I knew that my heart would crack from the wonderful way that you look. For if I were a duck, I'd quack. For if I were a goose, I'd be cooked. I'd be cooked. I'd be cooked. Ask me how do I feel. Ask me now that we're fondly caressing. Well, if I were a salad, I know I'd be splashing my dressing. And if I were a season, I'd surely be free. Or if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding kiddo. How does it feel to be standing in front of the Peoria Astoria Hotel in Peoria with the guy that'll probably be the next president of the sad boots? Tired. Mm -hmm. I didn't sleep a wink on that train last night. Somebody kept snoring all night. That's funny. I didn't hear it. I slept like a log. I know. I heard that log going back and forth through the sawmill all night. Oh, I do hope you win your election this year, dearie. You've run for president before, haven't you? Every convention. <laughs> and I've been gypped out of it, one flimsy excuse or another, every time. Well, now that's a shame. Yep, one year it was because my dues wasn't paid up. And next time it was because nobody voted for me. And <laughs> one bad break after another. Come on, let's register and look for old Fred Nittany. This convention ought to be... Well, for goodness sakes, look who's coming through the lobby. Huh? Mayor Latrivia, imagine meeting you here. My gosh, Latrivia. Hi, boy. Well, this is a pleasant surprise, Molly. Never expected to see you <laughs> here. Hello, McGee. Hmm. Himself is here for a convention, Mr. Mayor, and I came along. Yeah, the S-A-D-P-O-O-P's convention is here, Latriv. The sad poops. I'll probably get elected the, president. Uh, the what, McGee? The song and dance performers organization of Peoria, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. The sad poops. <laughs> Annual convention. Have it every five years. I see. Annually. Yep. <laughs> oh, I made a lot of old friends here this week, this week, Latriv. Real friends. True friends. Guys I ain't give a thought to in 20 years. <laughs> Now that's, that's very touching, McGee. That's the sort of friend I'd like to make of you. <laughs> Isn't that sweet, dear? Yeah, what room you in, Latrev? I'll bring a bunch of the old sad poop pals up tonight and really show you a time. 
We'll make it headquarters. Sit around, swap jokes, smoke your cigars, put our feet... Wait, 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 just a minute. How long are you going to be here, McGee? All week, Mr. Mayor, after the convention... Great Scott, I've got to get home immediately. Huh? Do you realize that you and I are both away from Wistful Vista at the same time, McGee? This is an impossible situation. My goodness, I never thought of that. Gee, me either. You worried about the town getting in a mess without me there to watch things, huh? Uh, well, not exactly. I was thinking what a wonderful week this must be in Wistful Vista. <laughs> oh, the trivia, you fool. Go home. Grab a plane. Call a taxi. Boy, get me a taxi. A taxi from the airport. Don't forget it. Isn't he sweet, McGee? And so conscientious, too. Yeah. Well, come on, let's get up to the desk here and get registered so we can start conventioning. Boy, oh boy, I can hardly wait to look up old Fred Nittany and the rest of the guys and get myself... A good day, sir. You wish to register? Yep. Fribble McGee, Wistful Vista. This is my wife, Mrs. McGee. Check us in, page Fred Nittany for me, show me where the sad poops convention is being held, and then send a case of root beer and a box of cigars up to the room. You are uh, Mr. McGee, sir? Fibber McGee? Well, if he isn't, I should have stayed home. <laughs> Message for you, sir. Oh, thanks, bud. Uh, oh, my gosh. It's from old Fred, Mom. Really? Yeah, he's already here, all right. Oh, well, good. I've always wanted to meet Fred yeah. Nittany. He says, Dear Fibber, got here and found I was the only sad poop that showed up. <laughs> what? All the other performers are in television this year. <laughs> You and I are the only remaining members. I'm quitting now myself. Take it away, pal. I'm off to Buffalo. <laughs> Your pal, Fred. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> heavenly days. So you're the last of the sad poops. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what are you so happy about? Why don't you get it, kiddo? Being the only remaining member, I'm the new president. <laughs> The new president and his wife return in just a moment. Every so often, it seems, people need to be reminded of some of the good things in life that are within easy reach. Milk, for example. Pet milk. Every time you go to your grocery store, you can see pet milk on the shelf. And quite often, probably, you take some home. But do you know how much this milk can mean to you and your family? You know, of course, that pet milk helps you to make favorite family dishes extra good... But did you also know that the minerals and vitamin D in pet milk enable a baby to build sound teeth and bones? And that the protein helps keep body tissues in repair? Now, on a simple everyday food like pet milk can help make family meals more enjoyable and also help to keep the family well, it deserves to be called one of the good things in life. You have pet milk on your pantry shelf? If not, how about getting some tomorrow? <laughs> hotel room is just beautiful, dearie. And the service, everyone is so wonderful to us. Yeah, and it's all on account of that story I give the newspapers, kiddo. The newspapers? Yeah, I called and told them the new president of the Sad Poops was here, only I, I shortened the initials a little. Let me read it to you. It says, new president of SP vacations here. <laughs> president of SP? That's Southern Pacific. Somehow that's what the hotel must have thought. <laughs> Milk, pet milk brings you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Have you ever made the mistake of jumping to conclusions about a neighbor? Well, then you'll know how the people on Blackberry Lane feel when they discover what a mistake they've made about their new neighbor. It's all told in the story of the week scheduled for next Saturday morning on Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor program. And the second big feature of the program is the husband-tested recipe of the week for macaroni loaf with creamed tuna. It's an easy-to-fix main dish that helps cut down your meat bill. 
So, for a mighty helpful recipe and a highly dramatic story, tune in to NBC next Saturday morning for Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor. Here, Big Town, next on NBC. Thank mm-hmm. you.